Now we come to the last part of this unit. But before we talk about the relationship between language and culture, I want to give more information about the symbiosis of language and culture. Human and culture in its great complexity could not have developed and is unthinkable without the aid of the language. Salzman, 2007. The reason they are linked is simple. They work together in a symbiotic relationship that ensures the existence and continuation of each. In order to help a culture, language is needed so group members can share knowledge of beliefs, values, and behavior, and engage in communal endeavor. In turn, culture is needed to organize disparate individuals into a cost cohesive group so those beliefs, values, behaviors, and communal activities can develop. Thus, it is readily apparent that language and culture are inseparable. It can be said that language reflects what is important in a culture and, in turn, culture shapes language. This means that those aspects of culture that are important for the members of society are correspondingly by highlight in the vocabulary. Example, American English have many words and phrases relating to time usage. For example, don't be late, hurry up, time is money. And time, it's not the essence. This illustrates the importance that people in the U.S. place on time. A culture is so closely tied to its language that if you change one, you change the other. Benjamin Lee Whorf stated, in what has become known as the Whorf Hypothesis, that language is not simply a way of voicing ideas, but is the very thing which shapes those ideas. An example of this is how one perceives of time. In our modern Western culture, we view time in the sense of the past, present, and future, a fixed and measurable progression of time. Other cultures, such as the Hopi Indians of North America, do not share this perspective of time. To the Hopis, there is what is, manifested, and what is not yet, unmanifested. Interestingly, the ancient Hebrews had a very similar view of time. Like the Hopi language, the ancient Hebrew language does not use past, present, and future tenses for verbs. Instead, they use two tenses, one for a complete action, manifested, and one for incomplete action, unmanifested. An individual whose native language is Hopi views time from the Hopi perspective. But if he is required to adopt English, he learns the English perspective of time. During the late 1800s, the United States forced the Native Americans to adopt the English language. When a Hopi no longer functions within his native language, the original cultural perspectives, such as time, is lost and replaced with the modern Western perspective of time. 
This same shift in perspectives can be seen in the ancient Hebrew vocabulary. In Numbers 15 verse 38 we read, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, Make tzitzit on the corners of your garments. The Hebrew word tzitzit is a noun derived from the word tzitz. A tzitz is the blossom of a tree which will become the fruit. The tzitzit then is a blossom, not in appearance, but in function. The function of the tzitzit is to be a reminder to the wearer to produce fruit. Fruit being the observance of the commands as stated in verse 39. And they will see them and remember all the commandments of Yahweh. Therefore, the word tzitzit carries with it a cultural perspective which connects the blossoms of a tree with the performance of a commandment. This Hebrew language continued to function as the Jewish people's native language until their removal from the land after the Bar Kokhba revolt in 135 AD, at which time they were dispersed into many different nations. While the Jewish people continued to use the Hebrew language from then until now, it was relegated to their religious lives alone and the language of the people around them, quite often this was Greek, was adopted as the language for everyday use. At this point, Greek becomes the influential language in their life, and their perspectives of the words and ideas are now determined by this dominant language. A tzitzit is now associated with the Greek word kraspadon which is defined as a decorative fringe or thread, changing their perception of what a tzitzit is. It is no longer a blossom, but simply a decorative fringe. This same shift in perception occurred each time a new language was adopted, whether it was Spanish, German, or English. In 1948, Israel became a Jewish state, and with that, Hebrew once again became the everyday language of the Jewish people. While the language had been resurrected, the original cultural perspective of that language had disappeared long ago, and the Western influence on that language survived. Therefore, its seat seat in the mind of a modern Orthodox Jew is still a decorative fringe and no longer functionally related to a blossom. This same change can be seen throughout the Hebrew language. For example, the Hebrew word Torah, which in the original Hebrew language meant a journey, now in the modern Hebrew means doctrine. A Kohen in the original language meant a base of the community but in the modern Hebrew language means a religious priest. The word kadosh, which originally meant special, now in the modern language means holy. Now let's take a look at the relationship between language and culture. Culture originates from language, and language reflects cultural image. The way of life are formed in the society by language and culture together. Language is a branch of culture because language is created by humans for use in communication. Language helps in inheriting culture. Language reflects the way of life of a nation which is recorded in written, visual dramatic or spoken. Language is as a tool for learning and teaching one's own people of other countries about one's own culture.